You can find the microcork editor on the Cork website. Choose support. After that keyboards and modules. Choose microcork. Click search. Scroll the insert. And there you have it. Download this file. On the Cork UK site you find it directly on the software. Run the file to install the microcork sound editor. Now this program can only communicate with your microcork via MIDI ports. Some sound cards have these, otherwise you'll need a USB to MIDI converter, which is a quite useful device anyway. Connect the MIDI in of your device with the MIDI out of your microcork and vice versa. Unless your manual says different of course. Now we are ready to rock and roll. Wait, first we have to turn off right protection by hitting shift 8, turning knob 1 and 8 again. And while we're at it let's press shift 4 and turn knob 4 to check the EE setting. This is normally there but you never know. Well it's there, press 4 again. This is the central interface of the program. It's a basic explorer window, but it has a few minor habits of its own. As you can see there are three main maps, my device, my setup and my library. They all contain something that's called microcork. Of course we are very curious about the typical microcork icon, but first we're gonna do something else. We're gonna make some new maps in the my library, in which we wanna make our own sounds and... Well, like I said, strange habit. We'll have to do it a little bit different. Click in the window at the right side and now we can make a new map. What do we want with these maps? Well, we want to make a library of our own patches here. So I'll rename this folder for example to original to keep my patches I already had on the microcork. Notice that you cannot use F2 to rename. Of course you can give these maps any name you want, for example leads, pads, sound effects, MS2000 etc etc. I have one map I call Rasa in which I keep an initiated patch. I will show you about that a little later. And now let's hit that icon. That sends a request to your microcard to deliver its actual settings via MIDI transfer, as you can see here, and your hardware wakes up. If you forgot to turn off the right protection, you'll get this window. But if all went well, you will see 129 icons representing the actual programs on your microcard. They remind a little of the scheme you find in your manual. If it didn't work, there might be something wrong with the MIDI settings. Check if they're alright. Here I must mention I have a problem with Vista. I will deal with that later. First I'm gonna save all my original programs on the microcork by selecting them all and dragging them to the map original I made earlier. There's another, more convenient way to do this. Namely by dragging the microcork icon into the microcork map in the My Setup route, we create a set file. Such a set file contains all the settings of the 128 programs of the microcork. You see here that beside the set file I just made, there's another one called Preload. This set file contains the original presets on your microcork. Just to demonstrate you how to use such a set file, I will bring back my presets to the microcorg again. You see this question coming? If I want to override the whole device, when I say OK, that will happen. And all the settings in the file will be written to the microcorg. And there they are, many patches which are downloaded from the internet. So with a few of these set files, you could have a number of totally different microcorg. On my Vista computer the patches won't load at first, but the preload set does. When I drag this preload set file to the microcork, then it asks me to overwrite, and when I say OK, the patches will load. Of course, these are the original presets you see, TransiRPEC, etc, etc. But now, after this little nuisance, I can work normally. 
Now I'm gonna make an additional sound. To do that I press shift 3 and then free again. Ok, now I must store the sound by pressing right and right again. The sound is now stored in A11. From there I drag it to the map raw saw. Because the sound is basically a raw sawtooth, I also rename this patch to a raw saw. Working from scratch is a real challenge of course, but we also would like to use the pre-cooked and baked patches we can find on the internet. There are also hundreds of patches for the MS-2000 you may use on the microcork as well. So let's drag some of these patches to our editor screen. Here we do that to the map in... What the f***? Well, can't copy this way. But you can get these patches simply into your maps by doing it in Windows outside the editor. Open the map Cork in the My Documents map. And here you will find the folders used by the editor. You don't have to leave the editor, the program is built in a backdoor, namely an explorer screen. As you can see the path is the same. And now we can drag patches in. Close the explorer window. The folder still seems empty, but isn't. 